Coral Island may be a farm sim game, but it also offers an entirely unique open world diving experience with an incredible story woven throughout. Here's everything you need to know to navigate the depths of the ocean with ease. Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. I'm Sarah Sunstone and today I will be guiding you through the diving mechanics and experience in Coral Island. I've got tips, I've got tricks. By the time you're finished with this video, you'll be breezing through the ocean with no problem. Of course, I'm going to cover everything you need to know in logical order, but be sure to stick around until the end of the video where I share one of the top game-changing tips for exploring the deeper depths. So without any further ado, let's get right into it. Now, when you first start playing Coral Island, you actually won't be able to start diving right away. In fact, you'll have to wait until spring day eight for diving to become unlocked when you receive a letter in the mail from Ling, the head of Starlet Laboratory. You will have to visit the diving pier south from your farm at the beach to conduct an on-site test and acquire your very own diving suit, from which point you can return to the ocean at any time. The ocean itself offers an open world experience with various diving zones corresponding to different depths, specifically 10 meters, 20 meters, 40 meters, and 50 meters deep. In order to get to the deeper depths, you will require an upgraded diving suit, but more on this later. You can monitor your current depth with the pressure meter, which is shown right below your total gold on the top right corner of your display. This is important to be aware of because different resources are available at different depths, specifically types of kelp, coffers, sea scavengeables, and ocean critters. The main purpose of the diving experience is to find the merfolk kingdom and fall in love. Wait. No, that's wrong. The main purpose of the diving experience is to clean up the trash found on the sea floor, heal the sick corals, and solve the mystery of the icky black roots that appear to be attempting to swallow Coral Island whole. This seems like quite the undertaking, but all of these tasks actually go hand in hand. By clearing the trash with your scythe, you will uncover solar orbs. Once you activate these, they will pair up with different ancient structures, emitting a powerful force. Next, you must follow the trail stemming from the structure, ensuring no trash is blocking its path so it can activate a secondary structure that will heal the surrounding area's coral and clear out the black roots. This in turn will also unlock new areas to further explore. The task of navigating the ocean may seem super overwhelming, but you won't be alone. You will actually be accompanied by your trusty companion Kibblebot, who is very helpful. Kibble will actually show you which specific pieces of trash will be blocking the trail of light in advance by highlighting the piles in red, so you can get ahead of it and easily clear a path, saving you time. This might seem like just a minor thing in the beginning shallow depths, but once you get to the deeper depths, some of these activation trails go on for what feels like forever, and if trash is blocking its path, it will cut off the activation, meaning the trail of light will have to restart back at the initial structure and make its way all the way to where it was cut off. I have definitely run out of time in the day waiting for a structure to complete its activation, so getting ahead on the trash clearing with Kibble's help definitely comes in handy. Kibble also has a few other handy features, like providing little tips and tricks along your adventures, alerting you when you're low on stamina and need to have a snack, or telling you that it's getting late. The one downside to Kibble's safety protocols is that they will extract you forcefully from the ocean at your 11 o'clock p.m. curfew. Since this activity is forced to conclude earlier than others around the island, it is especially important to get started on your ocean activities as early in the day as possible. Doing so on rainy days is great too, to save yourself the time and stamina from having to water your crops in the morning. You will activate the fast travel waypoint at the pier once you start diving and complete an activation, as long as you have already unlocked the fast travel mechanics. Even further, as you clean up the ocean, you will actually unlock underwater fast travel travel as well. I will have my guide to unlocking all fast travel waypoints linked in the description of this video if you'd like to learn more. Even with the fast travel, I would highly recommend playing on the 50% speed setting for diving if nothing else. Time will feel like it's going by much faster when under 
underwater because there aren't many user interfaces to interact with that pause the time, and the beautiful activation animations themselves take a fair amount of time to complete, so if you want to make good progress, 50% speed is the way to go. As you're clearing the ocean, it is also very important for you to move the anchor to wherever you will be leaving the ocean from by pressing X on your keyboard so that when you return, you know exactly where you are and what your next task is. If you don't actively move the anchor to points that make sense to you, you will just start your next trip wherever the anchor was last left. This can get a little confusing, especially if you take time away from diving or the game as a whole. If you feel very lost and confused, you can choose to reset the enter location of the anchor to the most shallow depth where you entered the very first time you went diving. This might be useful if you'd like to return to the beginning and work your way through the water in order once again. But the good news is there is now actually a diving map available which will keep track of your location along with where the ancient structures are found throughout the ocean. Your progress will be tracked and each structure will be marked as complete once they are successfully activated, so be sure to reference the diving map if you feel a little lost. Interestingly, there will also be strangers marked on the map. These are actually trapped sea creatures who really need your help. You will be able to free them from the dark roots they're trapped in when you complete specific activations, and in return, they will reward you with gifts. As you can see, there's already so much to do in the ocean and we're just getting started. Since you might end up being strapped for time with these efforts, you'll want to be prepared for your trip, ideally the night before. First, ensure that you have snacks for diving to help you replenish stamina when completing activations. The last thing you want is to be halfway through an activation and you just have no energy left to clear any more trash. I'm sure by now you know that I would highly recommend candied tree seeds for early game stamina, along with bug jerky, jamu, and vitamins for mid and late game respectively. However, you will also unlock one other useful snack from leveling up your diving just to diving level one, which is the scuba snack. You can easily craft this with the seaweed you gather while diving, and if you're thinking, Sarah, what seaweed? <laughs> Just wait. Once you start clearing out the trash, when you return the next day, more and more seaweed will be growing in. It just needs space to thrive away from the trash. Of course, if you're really in a pinch and you've used up all your seaweed for scuba snacks, you have nothing left to eat, you can always snack on sea scavengeables, which can be found all around the ocean. They're basically the underwater version of of forageables. Not only can you snack on them, but you can also sell them in early game, dry them out with a dehydrator, use them in your kitchen for cooking, and there's even a bundle of offerings at the lake temple dedicated to them. In terms of tools, the only two you will need for diving are most importantly the scythe and also your bug net. You can leave all other tools at home if you're limited on pocket space. The scythe is such a critical tool that you should definitely work on upgrading at the blacksmiths as soon as you can. I personally recommend this being your second priority to upgrade after the pickaxe. You should also try to upgrade your scythe in coordination with the different depths you're actively exploring. Your basic scythe will take two hits to break most trash in the 10 meter depths, but once you upgrade it to bronze, most trash will break with just one hit. The same same goes for the 20 meter depths. The bronze scythe will allow you to clear most trash with two hits, but the silver upgrade will get you back to breaking it down with just a single hit. Again, this is true for the 40 meter depths. You'll need the gold scythe to make clearing trash here easier and to follow suit the osmium scythe for the deepest 50 meter depths. Now, I also mentioned the bug net because this is actually what you will use to catch ocean critters, similar to bugs on land, which can be donated to the museum and offered to the lake temple on the catch altar for a dedicated bundle. So you'll want to have your net handy for when you spot a brand new critter. And remember that different critters are available in different seasons, times of day, areas, and depths. You can use your pickaxe to break up these rock-like structures. However, they only seem to drop stone at this time, so it doesn't seem entirely necessary unless they change something up about it in the future. So back to clearing trash. As you clear it, you will be able to collect different resources. Of course, sometimes it will just be trash itself, but these piles will also drop other useful resources like scrap, 
glass, and wood, for example. Sometimes you can even collect hardwood, which can otherwise be a bit of a challenge to acquire in early game, so this is awesome. Other trash piles might even drop fossil nodes once you have the soft bristle brush from upgrading the museum, and treasure coffers, which can be opened at the blacksmith to uncover ancient artifacts to be donated to the museum. Different coffers can be found at different depths. The ornate coffer is found at 10 meters, the shimmering coffer at 20 meters, the marble coffer at 40 meters, and the pirate coffer at 50 meters. Each of these coffer types have a chance to hold specific artifacts, while the mysterious coffer also exists, available at any depth, which has a chance to drop any artifact. There is even a perk for diving mastery, which offers a 100% increased chance in finding these coffers. Now, treasures are great, but one of the most valuable things you can gather while diving is actually kelp. Seriously, gather as much of this stuff as you can while you're diving. You will find bronze kelp at 10 meters, silver kelp at 20 meters, gold kelp at 40 meters, and osmium kelp at 50 meters. Kelp is used for crafting really important things like sprinklers and fertilizer, for example, but it can also be bottled in its essence form, which can be used for many purposes. Offerings at the lake temple, upgrades to your fishing pole and bug net, and lab upgrades, which are incredibly game-changing. In short, you can trade the essences at the lab along with some money to permanently upgrade the quality of your crops, fruit plants, fruit trees, and animal feed. This means that from this upgrade forward, everything you produce on your farm will always have a higher chance of being quality, and quality products sell for more money, so do not sleep on lab upgrades. I would highly recommend redeeming the double kelp perk first for diving mastery once you get your first skill point at diving level 2, which will give you a chance to receive double the kelp with every collection. Although that's essentially everything you need to know for early game diving, I've talked quite a bit about deeper depth and you will need that upgraded diving suit to access them. While there is a lot of story involved in the ocean experience, which I absolutely will not spoil for you, I will give you the basic information you need to know for overall progression, just in case you want to make sure that you're not missing out on anything or if you're confused about how to unlock the next step. First up, you will need to complete all of the 10 meter activations to acquire an upgraded diving suit. Then you will need to complete all 20 meter activations to unlock the Merfolk Kingdom and a later curfew. The Merfolk will then decide whether or not they trust you to enter the deeper depths to continue on your mission of healing the ocean and uncovering the mystery of the dark ocean roots. If you are granted with permission, from here on, your efforts throughout the ocean are very much tied to the merfolk and related quests. You will also ultimately be able to unlock various ocean caves that you may have stumbled upon throughout your journeys already, which at this time can be used as areas to farm resources, coffers, and fossils. Now finally, before you go, I have probably one of the most useful tips for proceeding into the deeper depths. This is one of those things that you might wish you had known sooner, so please listen up. Once you unlock the Merfolk Kingdom, you will also unlock the ability to purchase the Black Marlin Ring at the BOS shop. When equipped, this will increase your movement speed while diving. So if you wear this alongside the Ring of Speed to boost your tool movement and taking into account your tool upgrades, you will be so much more efficient at cleaning up the ocean and completing activations at the 40 and 50 meter depths. This is something you don't really want to wait on, so you can actually take full advantage of it for all the trash clearing you're going to have to do in the deepest parts of the ocean. It's also just really helpful for this period of the game specifically and of course again no spoilers but as you progress the storyline even further you will unlock some new underwater movement mechanics to enjoy going forward so definitely take advantage of that ring and appreciate it when it is most useful for you which will be for that period of time where you're actively clearing the 40 and 50 meter depths of the ocean well there you have it friends that was everything you need to know to navigate coral islands ocean depths with ease please let me know down in the comments your favorite aspect of the dive experience? Is it the design of a certain ocean cave? Getting to meet the colorful ocean NPCs? Meditating while cleaning trash and collecting kelp or something else? Anything and everything you know I always love hearing from you. If you would be so kind to take an extra second and give the video a like if you found this video helpful, I would super appreciate it. And with all that being said, thank you so much for watching. I love you all. And until next time, take care. 
And a very special thanks to Paul, Meredith, Ember, Formotis, Tansy, Becca, Anime Lover, Jack, James, Cisco, Phoebe, Janelle, Dragonfay, Judith, Blossom, Sunshine, Elsa, It's Me, Andrea, Eurasia, Cheese, Divine Raven, Kayla, Wolf, Zaris, Lawrence, Faviola, Kicknell, Alyssa, Flores, Arnica, Grey Ghost, Valley Wolf, and Danny, my beautiful gemstone members. I love you all very much and thank you so, so much for the extra support on the channel, which really helps to make all that I do possible and means the world to me. 